I have the fur jacket, I have the money, I have my suitcase, and I still have the shirt with the blood on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, what the heck just happened? Hey guys, welcome to part one of my video with Benny the Jet Orchidas, Sensei Benny. I want to give a special shout out to Jeff Langton for helping set up this interview. But anyway, I had asked a lot of you guys to submit questions in the community post of what you wanted me to ask him. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't ask him everything you guys wanted me to ask him, but I think I got some really good, unique stuff. So he did an interview with Scott Atkins on The Art of Action not too long ago, and they went over a lot of good stuff like the fights with Jackie Chan on Meals on Wheels, etc. I really wanted to get things that he didn't really talk about on that show and then on some other interviews either. I wanted to get more unique things. So I asked him about this underground fight I had heard about. I asked him about training Shannon Lee. I asked him about Street Fighter. So we're going to get all that. But in this video, it's just going to be about this craziest fight he's ever been in in Hong Kong that I don't think that many people are aware of. And I'm glad that he shared this because it's quite fascinating. Anyway, if you like this kind of content, please help support the channel. Hit the like button, subscribe, share the video. It is a real honor to have you on here, Sensei Benny. A real honor. You are a true legend in the martial arts and film world. Thank you much. Now, I know you're limited on time, and we could literally talk all day about some of the fight scenes you did with Jackie Chan, which have been covered on other channels. So I want to try to get a few more unique things that you haven't really discussed too much, if that's okay. Sure. Can you tell me, or the audience, if you don't mind, share that amazing story you told me on the phone a few months ago about what I consider the real Kumite, like the underground fight for that fur coat uh, that, that took place back in the day? I did a picture, I did a movie. And so I was in Hong Kong and they wanted, you know, uh, I was there for an interview. Mm -hmm. I was sitting, there were some people sitting down, Chinese were sitting down on the audience, stuff like that. And, and so the, um, this guy from an audience jumped up and he pointed at me and he was talking in Chinese. And the interpreter says, he says, you're an actor, you're not a real fighter. And he challenges you to the death, do you accept? And I said, what? <laughs> and he said, he thinks you're just an actor, you're not a real fighter. And he challenges you. Uh, would you do you accept? And I, here I am on in uh, on TV. This is what are you going to say? No, this and that. So I said, hey, you know, for the money, I'll fight anybody. Sure. And I left it at that. Mm -hmm. And so after it was over with the interview and this and that, uh, I go in the hallway and these two Chinese guys, Chinamen, came up to me and said, "How much do you want to fight him?" And I said, "Fight who? Fight what?" He's <laughs> He just challenged you and, and you accepted how much do you want to fight him? And I said, I don't know. I said, uh, I have to think about it. And so he said, okay. And they left. So I went to, the, I was in this beautiful hotel. I mean, there was the Kaloon side, which is uh, where all the, if you want to call the Ritzies go. And I was at this hotel. It was so beautiful. And I thought, Hmm, I'm a, uh, what do I want? <laughs> so I figured, okay. Uh, I look and I, and I was walking by these beautiful minks and furs. And, and so I went inside. I said, how much is this mink here? And, he, and he, they told me, I said, can you put it on a piece of paper? And they did. And I walked off. And, and I figured that they were going to come the next day. That night they came. They knocked on my door. I opened the door and, he, and I said, can I, he says, so how much do you want? And I said, right off my head, I just said, I want $50,000. I want this. I want 20% uh, of the TV. And he said, no TV. No mm -hmm. TV. And, this, and I, so I figured, okay. Um, I was thinking exhibition. Sure. Because I didn't really hear. You know, I heard it, but I didn't really hear what he said. And, and he said, okay. Tomorrow, we come. I said, no, no, I need, I need, give me at least a couple of weeks to go home and train. And, and he said, no, tomorrow. <laughs> wow. And I said, what? He said, tomorrow. So let you know, here I am. I said, so I went, I didn't have anything. So I went to a, 
uh, sporting goods and I bought a mop piece and I bought some hand wraps and I bought a cup mm -hmm. and um, I had my gi bottoms. I always take my gi bottoms with me anyway. So I figured, okay, this, this would be okay. And, and I really, honest to God, I thought I was just going to do an exhibition. You know, sure. uh, just, and so I, uh, they come for me. And I said, okay, well, uh, and in this limousine, I'm asking, am I going to fight first? Or how many fights are there? Uh, the reason they said, no, 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 no. Okay. And I said, what does that mean? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> am I fighting first? Am I fighting last? Uh, how many are, are there? And he says, it's okay. And I said, oh, man. I said, this guy don't know what he, he doesn't understand English that well. Yeah, sure. And so we get there and I'm looking like, where, where are we going? And we're going on the, you know, there's a Kulun side and there's a Hong Kong side. And we went on the Hong Kong side and we're going up the mountains. And I'm thinking, wow, where are we going? Yeah, I said, I've never seen this. So I'm trying to make conversation with him. And he just said, he just kept looking at me saying, no, no, no okay, okay, okay. And I said, you know what, let me just get this over with. Sure. And I figured, hey, I, you know what? I got the fur jacket. I got the money. I put his eyes up. Oh, I'm just going to do my thing and leave. Mm -hmm. So we get there. And I see this building with a light and this big Chinese guy in front of it. And so we parked. And I'm saying, well, where's all the cars? Where's, where's everybody at? And he said, come, come. And I figured, you know what? I'm just going to get this over with. I get out and I'm walking. I don't see any cars. This big building with a light, we go to it. So I tell the guy in the front, I, I don't know if he speaks English or not. And I said, everything okay? Deadpan face. Mm. Opens the door and I walk in and there, it was like, it looked like a V of seats in a circle. And it, and like it was a cage, but a big cage. Mm. And there were seats all the way around it. And I'm thinking, well, okay, well, what the heck is this? So he takes me and points me to this door, and I go in there, and I honestly got, I, I might as well have been in the closet. It was that small. Oh, wow. I'm trying to say, am, am I going to be with other fighters? Am I going to be by my, I'm trying to make conversation, and he just, yeah, 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 like brushing me off, and I said, oh, shit. <laughs> so I ended up, I, so I figured, hey, because I was trying to see if there's going to doctor check me and this and that. Sure. Um, they figured that. So I just start wrapping and I figured, okay, I wrap my hands and I put, usually you cannot put tape over the knuckles, but since he didn't say anything, so I put tape over my knuckles and locked in my hands. And I said, okay. And I, and I was ready to go. I had my uh, mouthpiece and so forth. So I figured I'm just going to do an exhibition. Mm -hmm. So they open the door and he waves at me. So I'm following behind him. So I'm trying to say, well, after how many rounds are we going? And he just kept on saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so the, um, I go in and this guy's on the other side. And then he's on the other side with his back toward me. I walk in and next you know it, the guy, uh, the guy that brings me in, now he's the referee. Huh. And he turns around and this, uh, the guy puts his hands up and says, to the death. Now, I heard him say to the death, but it didn't, I didn't comprehend what that's he meant. True. I just thought that's the thing he did. He just put his hands up mm -hmm. and said, so he came after me and I'm moving around. My first kick, I shin kicked him right, in, uh, right on his cheekbone and, I, and it popped. And his eye closed up. So I'm looking at the referee saying, look at his eye. He can't see me. And so I'm trying to tell him, stop the fight. He can't see me. You know, his eyes, I just broke his cheekbone. But this guy kept on coming at me. So I'm moving around. So the bell rang. And so I'm thinking, well, where do I go? So this guy goes to the, uh, one, the other side of the, the square box. And I go, so I just figured, I just put my hands and went back to the square box. And then I get this guy tapping me in the back. And he hands me a beer. And I look at him like... <laughs> I just waved like, hey, you know, I don't, I don't need that. So then the bell rang again. It went, it, it wasn't even the bell. It was a, uh, that kind of a, 
sound and he turned around and he put his hands up and said to the deaf, this time I heard him clearly. And my heart started pumping. Yeah. So I started, I went after him and I went after him and he clinched me to knee me. I hit him in the body. I heard a crack. That's how hard I hit him in the body. I hit him in the body. I heard a crack. So I know. And I heard him go, oh, you know, and he let go of me. And I turned and swept him. I hit him and he went down. And the guy, he's having a hard time breathing. So I'm, t I'm looking at the referee telling him, count, you know, hey, this guy can't move. Count him out. And the referee's looking at me like pointing at him. And I don't know what the referee's saying because he's mm. saying it in, in, in uh, you know, Chinese. And I'm, I'm looking at him like, what? What? So I, I'm really confused of what's going on. And this guy gets back up and the horn, uh, you know, blows out. And, and the guy jumps over and grabs him and takes him to the other side. And I go back thinking, and I'm trying to tell the referee he can't see me. Mm -hmm. And the referee is looking at me like, you know, with a deadpan face, like, uh, you know, get on that side. And so, I mean, he, and he didn't even answer me. He just had a deadpan face. And, and he pushes me to that one side. So I go to the other side of the square box, and I'm thinking, what the heck is going on? And the bell will go, ah, and he turned around. And he, and he was, this time, he only put one hand. He couldn't put both hands because I cracked his rib. And he said to the death, by then I got all hyper. I chased him, this and that. I went, I struck him, this and that. And he went down. Um, and I'm looking, I'm straddling his body, looking down. He can't breathe. He can't see. And I'm telling him if he gets up, you know, I'm going to send him to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And this guy couldn't breathe. He can't see me. He's <laughs> cheekbone and I'm saying, I'm going to send him to the hospital. I said, oh, my God. It should already have an ambulance over here. Sure. So then I got, and then everybody, and I'm looking around, and I started looking at the audience, the people. And they all got, it's like their thumbs pointing down at me. Wow. And I'm looking around, and it's like slow motion. I'm starting to look around, and people are doing this, and I, and screaming, but I'm not sure what they're saying. So I didn't know what to do. This guy can't breathe. He can't see, you know? So I do a backflip because I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> and next year, you know it, they come, they grab me and they take me, you know, instead of taking me into the dressing room where I was, they take me out and run me into side. And I'm telling them, my suitcase, my, you know, my, all my stuff, you know, my stuff is in there, uh, in there. And, and they already had put it in the car, my clothes. Mm -hmm. And so we take off and I'm, and I'm looking at them. And then I see the fur jacket in there. I see the money. I see my I suitcase. I said, you, they went actually to the hotel, got my stuff wow. and in this limousine and took me to the airport. I had a shirt on with his blood still on, man. So I get in the airport. They take me on the plane. I'm on the plane, and I'm flying back. I have the fur jacket. I have the money. I have my suitcase. And I still have the shirt with the blood on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, what the heck just happened? You know, I'm trying to figure out what, what happened, man. What, what just go, what went on? And I couldn't believe it. So all the way back here, I'm thinking, going over my mind, what just happened? Did, was it real? Mm -hmm. Did I just do it? And I'm looking at my blood, the shirt, and there was still blood on it. And I'm thinking, it's, it's real, but it didn't seem real to me. So I get home. My wife picks me up at the airport. And I'm bringing this mink jacket with, the, and I got money in my pocket and this and that. And, and you know what? I even forgot to declare the money. That's so, you know, I just, I, I walked through, you know, got my uh, suitcase and my wife picks me up and she said, what's that? And I said, you never understand what just happened. And she said, what? So I started to tell her what happened. 
And I told her about the fur jacket and I showed her the money and, and the mint jacket and so forth. And she you know what? She never wore it. She got rid of it. And uh, from that point, you know, I, I, you know, she said, you should, uh, you know, you should actually, Are you, good? you should actually tell, you know, uh, tell somebody. And I said, no, I don't even want to, I don't even want to talk about it. Sure. I, I didn't tell anybody for the, almost a year. I, I just kept it to uh. myself and told, uh, told my wife, don't say anything, you know, just leave it as it is. And so because of that, uh, after a year, it was really bothering me. And she said, you should tell somebody. Mm -hmm. Finally, I did an interview. I, I don't know if it was Inside Kung Fu or one of them, but all I know is I did an interview and I talked a little bit about it, but I didn't go into details. And that was it. That was the end of that. Uh, you know, I, I've had a lot of different things happen to me going to different countries, introducing kickboxing to the world. But I tell you what, uh, that was the most craziest <laughs> one that I can. Yeah, that, that is. And, and thanks for sharing. It's uh it's it's the stuff straight out of a movie when when you're saying like the audience was giving the thumbs down like they literally used that scene in best of the best too when they were doing those underground fights in vegas and the audience it's like oh wait they want to kill these people that's so crazy but like that stuff apparently happens you know like not in this country but like in other countries that's crazy uh sensei benny let me just ask you one more question about that um that crazy underground fight the, the audience, like how many people do you think were watching? Was it like a dozen people? Was it hundreds of people? Like, was it a big crowd or a small crowd? What? The seats went up in an angle. And a it full was, stadium. Yeah, up. And we're in the middle. And it wasn't even a ring. It was a square box. Yeah. And, uh, and it must have been maybe four to five feet high. And we're standing in a square box. So there's no round. It was square, Sweet. you know? And so, I mean, if I go to the side, I hit, I was stuck in the square unless I moved. It was, a, uh, it was like a ring, but solid. There was no, there was no ropes. It was just a solid, uh, about five feet high. What, but what was this stadium like packed? Like every seat was basically taken or were there just a few spectators? No. It was packed. Really? Wow. It was packed. But you know what the worst part about it was? Hmm. I kept on thinking, where were the cars? How did they get there? That's weird. Yeah, I because I didn't see any cars. <laughs> sure. you know, I didn't see any cars around. All I saw this big building with a light and this guy in the front of it. That's all I saw. That's crazy. And uh, I, so I thought, well, what am I doing here? Am I, I to tell me? I thought maybe this was a dojo or something, a gym that I was going to go in and work with this guy. And I had no, I mean, I was, believe me, and I've had so many eye openers, you know, going to different countries, um, not realizing. And I had an interview and they said, wasn't you afraid that they were going to kill you? And I said, you know, I never thought of that. I went to go, and show a sport sure he said but wasn't you afraid that, that you know they could have easily just killed you and dumped you in the you know and i said if they did they did i'm not afraid to die but i didn't go there for that i went there to show a sport but i didn't realize back then that to them it was like country against country and yeah a um, little bit different a little bit different understand it and um and it's not like i'm naive and this and that but at the same time i never thought that you know because i beat their best you know they're going to kill me or they're going to just i never thought that i ne it never entered my brain yeah, it's not something you would think about especially being an american right because that doesn't go on in america obviously that's right wow. In my next video with Sensei Benny, we're going to talk about the history and how he helped create as a pioneer the sport of full contact kickboxing.